It's time for Mac Break Weekly. It's the last Mac Break Weekly before the iPhone 10 comes out. Will Andy, Renee, and Alex and me get our new iPhone 10 by November 3rd? Tune in and find out. We'll also play trivia, the hot new HQ game. And uh, we've got some great app picks this week, including one that's going to make your photo into art. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 581, recorded Tuesday, October 24th, 2017, when the button goes blue. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Tracker, a coin-sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com slash MacBreak to save 20% off any order. And by ZipRecruiter. Are you looking to hire a tech professional or anybody in any position? With ZipRecruiter, you can post to 100-plus job boards, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen, rate, and hire the right candidates fast. Try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. And by Eero. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Eero's hyper-fast, super-simple Wi-Fi system. And now, the second-generation Eero is tri-band and twice as fast. For free overnight shipping, visit Eero.com and select Overnight Shipping at checkout. Enter the code MACBREAK. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we get the latest Apple news from the best Apple journalists in America. Rene Ritchie's not even in America, and he's still the best Apple journalist in America. He's with iMore.com all the way from Montreal. Hello, Rene. Hey, I got we're having a storm here, and I was out in the rain, and I came in, and now I have cloud hair. <laughs> it just, I, it's so humid right now. It feels like I'm swimming. It's pretty. I inside. like it. You, you, your hair matches. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh, Alex Lindsay. He actually has cloud hair, too. I don't have any excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Pixelcore.com. Renee Ritchie, Alex Lindsay, let's see. Oh, must be Andy <gasps> Inako from the Chicago Sun-Times. It's missing. Hey, Andy. I have the best solution to cloud hair. I've got just hats. And he's amazing because he can talk without moving his lips. I he's just, like, I love how he does that. He's it's like oh. a kung fu movie. <laughs> uh, I have to apologize ahead of time because... In about half an hour, at 12 noon uh, Pacific exactly, I'll be playing HQ Trivia. <laughs> but you guys can help me. This is a new game from the founder of uh, Vine, Russ Yusupov. And it's it's kind of, it's, they've only been, it's only been out for a few days. It's, it's all the rage. And I made it my uh, pick for iOS today. Then it, but then I realized, but it only plays uh, twice a day, 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern. So is it, it well, I don't understand. It's what live. It, but you're playing against all the other people at the same time. And well, you're going to find out in half an hour because I have to play it because we have to record it so we could put it in. Is it a game to get today. a bunch of people to register? I mean, is, it, is, it, is this the business I don't know because they're giving don't... away money, but not a ton of money. I mean, they're giving away, I think it's 250 bucks, but then they divide it among all the winners. So well, I don't if know. If you have a startup and funding, you could probably do that for, <laughs> yeah, day, for weeks. You could do it months. for weeks, months, years. Right. And you get users, Alex. That's the only thing that's a value in the startup right. word. Well, well that's what I'm trying users. to figure out is like, but where do you, what do you do with those users once you get them? <laughs> you sell them to a bigger company. Oh, okay. <laughs> they'll find a way to monetize, you know. <laughs> they'll, they'll pivot. This is Silicon Valley. Why are we talking about making money? They'll pivot to video, Andy. Is that what they'll do? Yeah. Whose advice is that? Maybe uh, some some startup guy's advice is don't think about making money yet. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, don't do it too just soon. Just get the users. Yeah, just, just get the users. It's all about the users. Every user is dollar value. That sounds like Jason Calacanis, I think. <laughs> uh, all right, this is it. This is the week. This is it. Are we ready? Friday, 1201 Pacific. Uh, so ready. Yeah. I am ready. I've favorited my phone. Me too. It's about all you can do. Let me ask a question because there was some uh, confusion Apple, well, a few things Apple's already said about what this event. One is if you're on the upgrade plan, you know, where you get a new phone every year, you're pre-registered. But will you get it any faster? You still have to go and complete the order at the same time as everybody else. So you like you get like this whole process you go through and you get pre-approved. And then there's like one step at the bottom, and that is show up at midnight Pacific time and yeah. complete your order. Double thumbs up. Good so luck. it's very much like favoriting. Uh, so I'm right there. I pick the phone, pick the color, pick the size, and I just yeah, press continue. Sure 
And then yeah. it says, yeah, and make sure you've got a credit card already set up in the, this is on the app, which I think is the best way yes. to do it, I think. And that you're not, your credit's not frozen for any reason, because, you know, yeah. something, there's mm -hmm. been a bunch of stuff that's happened that's right. caused credit freezes, so. Actually, it'd be probably prudent to buy a dongle the night before. Yes. Just to make sure. Right. Right? To make sure it's all <laughs> Do a test go. drive. <laughs> Apple's going to sell all these $10 I dongles. I do that, Leo, because once, <laughs> once I went to buy it and it said my Apple Pay settings weren't right, and I went in and there was no address, and I had to pick. They had two addresses of the same address on file. I had to pick one, and it cost me precious seconds. So I, Actually, know, I have you once. sent my watch to somewhere else. It scared me how fast I was able to buy the iPhone 8. I was getting off a plane, and I remembered, and I went, oh, and like seconds later, I own it because it's just touch ID and boom. Right. Yeah. It was favorited. <laughs> yeah. Cost me so many watch bands. That's, well, that's, isn't that one of the basic principles of marketing that do not give the user enough time to yep. switch from an emotional decision to yep. an intellectual decision? Yep. Just yes. get the money out of their hands, get the shiny oh. thing in their in their in their hands instead. One one thing, right? the, the big reason I use Amazon Amazon so much is because it's all it's like quick and fast and it's on my app and it's an you know, impulse. If, if I go to someone else's website and I'm like, oh, now I gotta fill all this out again, I gotta do this and yeah. Impulse drive like Star Trek. So there uh there are according to rumors again and supply chain rumors, three million total day of Sale. Well, that's much better than the 65,000 we had heard before. Yeah. <laughs> Three million might be enough. Depends on if they allocate regions and so forth. And then Apple has announced, and this is not a rumor, this is official, that the retail stores will have iPhone X in stock, but arrive early. Which means we're It's weird. Like after years of discouraging the lineup, I mean, it's pretty much back now. They're saying line up. Yeah, are they? I, I bet you there are people that. lining up in the New York right now. They, oh, so there's press. there's a battle within Apple every year because it's great marketing for them to have this lineup, but it's a terrible customer experience. And I think if Apple Store and like Angela Aaron's had her druthers, no one would ever have to line up. They would the order process would be seamless. It would just arrive. You would you would never have to do any of this. But this is a product under severe constraint, and they want to make sure the stores have some supply. And so if you don't get the pre order in, you're going to go to. The, it feels like there's nothing they can do about it other than enjoy the glory of the Apple. You have to think, though, I, I, this went away when Angela Aarons uh, yeah. took the job as in charge of retail, uh, leaving uh, Burberry to do that. And you have to think that there are there's the other faction. <laughs> the yep. We Like Lines faction is just going, <laughs> yeah, we win. Oh, yeah, because it's all over TV, right? It's all over TV. It's all over the Internet. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, do a little, a little tour de force. I have not rehearsed this, but I'm going to tell you the countries that the iPhone 10 will be available in on November 3rd, in you alphabetical Canada, order. Are you ready? In one breath. In one breath. <sighs> Andorra, Australia, Austria, Bahrain, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, China, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Greenland, Guernsey, Hong Kong, Hungary, Iceland, India, Ireland, Isle of Man, Italy, Japan, <gasps> Jersey, Kuwait, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Mexico, Monaco, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Puerto Rico, Qatar, Romania, or Qatar, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, Taiwan, UAE, UK, US, and US Virgin Islands. Like Guernsey gets one, right? That's like Guernsey gets happened. one phone. <laughs> but boy, boy, that we have the one guy in Guernsey is really happy. <laughs> That's a lot of places for a, a highly constrained. 55. Usually, when it's highly constrained, yeah, fifty-five and, countries, three million iPhones, and the and Andorra. The Italian Riviera. Happened. Doesn't Nambia get one? <laughs> Nambia, <laughs> Nambia gets one for every citizen. I'm surprised Nambia doesn't get one. I just felt like the weirdest <laughs> one. The weirdest one in that whole section is Andorra. Andorra, and which Andorra. is a is small this just Spanish a, republic near uh, Spain. Italy. Italy. Yeah. Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Italian, is this just a Italian map Riviera. of like where Apple exec senior Apple executives have either relatives or vacation properties? <laughs> Monaco gets one. It's right next. At least to the operations department. So they probably they bring a couple of boxes in and just. Distribute them between Monaco and Andorra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you put them in paper towels and you throw them at people. Uh, anyway, uh, we're excited, right? Totally. Especially yeah. since the Pixel 2 XL's screen is crap. In fact, I have to think there are a lot of people who are saying, hmm, maybe I should cancel that Pixel 2 XL order because Google is just, you know, they're just starting to get those in the supply chain and get an iPhone 10. I've, Apple did the right thing. They bought their panels from Samsung. Yes. Google bought them from LG. It's the same panel, apparently, as in the LG V30, which has similar yes. problems, although no one said anything about burn-in on the LG. So you have a very good theory, Renee Ritchie, why there seems to be, in fact, you said 
your boss has seen the burn-in? No, so Alex on Android Central, oh, Alex, uh, one of the Android okay. Central reviewers, he does the video review there. He he tweeted uh, about it. I think he was the first one to tweet about it. And he had a week-old review unit and already had the the burn-in. And I think Dieter Bone, my former boss, who's now at The Verge, uh, said that he was experiencing the same thing on his review unit. And it is identical panels, but there's a rumor that LG did more to mitigate it. Like they avoided showing the tones that would that would heighten the grain. And maybe they did a better job of, of preventing the burn-in because all OLED has burn-in. It's just a question of how far out you can push it months or years. And Samsung does a really good job pushing pushing burn-in out. And on a phone, it's not as a big deal as a television because so most people don't keep it for that long. There's two different problems with OLEDs. There's image retention, which is temporary, right? Yes. And burn-in, which prob is probably permanent. Or can it be fixed? Permanent or long duration, long and there duration. are there are techniques people try to use for. I mean, there, the there are, is there a wide range of issues with OLED. There's no technology that's uh, perfect, but OLED is not very mature. LCD is a super mature technology, and people know how to use it. OLED it took Samsung years to get really good panels. They went through a whole bunch of problems with theirs, and now they probably have the best in the business. And and L LG does great televisions, but that's a totally different technology that uses filters and things in a way that's not practical on phones and on their phone panels they've been struggling with things like off axis color shift and the graininess and you know a variety of things including what we're seeing on the Pixel XL so it does sound like given that the V well actually I think people with the LG V20 were saying there was some issues as I remember but given that we haven't heard about burning with the V30 but we have with the same panel on the Google phone is maybe they're not maybe LG's doing something like that image Jitter that yeah, Samsung like Samsung does. moves its interface around, yeah. I think, one pixel at a time to avoid. But if you go on on, on Google and search for burn-in, you'll see like Pokeballs and things burned in on OLED displays <laughs> and, and menu icon. Anything that's persistent on the display for long periods of time can theoretically cause Here's burn -in. Alex Doby's uh, tweet. And you have to look at it closely because unfortunately there's also reflection in yeah. there. But you see them, it's the menu, it's the menu keys, right? It's right. Let me actually, let, right. me, let me telestrate it. This is what the telestrator is so good for here. <laughs> the um, back went down the back. <laughs> actually, it's not it's not telestrating right now. Somebody, I think. And the issue is that this is like again, this all happens. What we've talked about right. before with like lithium ion batteries, they they all have a failure rate. But after a week is a concern. It's not that it necessarily has burning, but it has burning after only being in the hands of these reviewers for That's a week. That's terrible. Yeah, you can so you can see the back and the yeah. and the home and the recent buttons. Those are the ones that never move, and that, so that that is really bad. The dock. Wow. Um, yikes. And this is on top of the previously reported stuff. Not that, I mean, we should say not that Apple doesn't have <laughs> issues from time to time, especially, you know, it's always risky to get the phone the minute it comes out the door. Yeah. I and mean, brand new phones. Yeah. You got to be committed if you're going to do it the day, you know. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really want it, especially, yeah, first design, first time. There was a great quote from Jeff Williams in one of the interviews. I'm sure we'll get to later. But one of the quotes said, Apple wants cutting-edge technology at mature technology's uh, volume. Oh, that's and a good that's way to put it. that's always a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a huge challenge when you're making a new phone. And that's why there's 3 million, if there are even. And they waited for, like, for uh, to Apple's credit. Like, some people are worried now that iPhone 10, because iPhone 10 also uses OLED uh, display technology, uh, will have similar issues. But Apple sourced from Samsung, which has a good history with OLED. Like, the Galaxy, the last few generations of Galaxy Note, OLED has been much, much better. And also, Apple's doing all their own stuff with it. Like, they're doing their own subpixel anti-aliasing, their own color management. They're doing True Tone. Uh, so there's a lot of things that Apple can do to make sure that uh, it, it is a pentile display. I think that's a trademark. So I think they're going to call it diamond pattern. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that you can mitigate against uh, OLED. And the biggest problem is like the lifespan of the blue pixel is not nowhere near as long as the lifespan of the green and red one. So a lot of the OLED stuff is just working around that base issue. I have to say, I've had OLED phones for years from Samsung, and they've I've never had any problems with them with fading or with burn-in yep. or even image retention. I don't they think I've had it right. in general with phones. You know, I haven't had a lot of burn-in with phones or, or iPads. I, I mean, I've definitely OLED had it with TVs. I haven't had that problem either. I have an but OLED. But you keep them for like two years? Because yeah. that's usually like like around the two-year mark, you might see it on almost any I OLED. I have an OLED uh, ThinkPad that's pretty new. But I'm still I'm still old-fashioned where I never want to see anything get left on. Well, it's not if you're a photographer, as you are, right. there's no or a video guy, there's no you don't want that there. You don't know if it's real. Right. And some people are really sensitive. Like I, I have an LG television, an OLED television, and I'm fine with it, but a friend of mine he sees it drop a few frames and it makes him sick. Like he, it uh, actually makes him sick when it drops frames. <laughs> and some people have that problem with VR. 
And again, like he can't hear audio distortion. He's got very good hearing. And if there's something wrong in, a, in like the, the quality of music, he has to turn it off. And I'm fine. I'm like, play that louder. It doesn't bother me at all. Here's here's what I mean. Here's, by the way, a, an article from Android Authority that uh, Samsung S8s have display burn in as well. Uh, I never noticed it. But you know what? This is my problem with some of this stuff. If you're picky and you notice it and then you tell everybody, everybody notices it. But if you didn't ever mention it, nobody would notice it. There's a certain pickiness. Now, you're a picky person, right. Alex. So I expect <laughs> you. Uh, no, because you're a perfect, you know, you're that's yeah. your job. You're visual. But um, I've never noticed any of these problems. It's like the Apple thing with the modems, like the Intel versus Qualcomm modems or the the Taiwan Semiconductor versus Samsung right. chipsets. How there, picky do you want to be? But most people, but also most people will never notice that. And there's some people who will have no problem with the Pixel 2 display. They'll be like, oh, off axis color. I don't, I don't, I don't care at all. Give me the phone. And other people will say, oh, it looks blue. I really don't like that. I'm going to spend my money on another phone. Sandy's yeah, but point, expectations. $850. Yeah, I mean, expectations do go up the more you're charging for this. For for a thousand dollars, the the iPhone 10 has to be damn near perfect, or there should be a, uh, a a statement in place that says if there's something broken with it, don't worry, we will replace it or fix it because this thing has to be perfect. Whereas I bought a hundred and twenty five dollar phone where, God, if there was only <laughs> yellow on the display, they'd be okay. Well, what do you want for hundred twenty for five point two five inch display with hundred twenty five bucks? That's fair. All right, Friday, we'll, we'll know among the five of us, four of us, somebody will have one, I hope. <laughs> uh, one thing I do know, and I can't say how, but we will have a unit on the November 4th new screensavers mm. and a review. Nice. But, but I can't tell you how, because <laughs> I don't know. But there's some magic being done. It has something to do with the Pope. So, I thought you were going to say Johnny Ive was the name. I don't want to. I don't want to no. spoil it. Father Robert has somehow gained access to one, and we'll be doing the papal iPhone. You will be doing a review. With the so papal no, iPhone. November fourth, we will have. So a when you, and when it rings, you'll pick it up, and, and they'll be like, "Is this Hello? the Pope? Is this the Pope? Uh, no, Pope. This, is, this is not the Pope. It's the Pope." <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we will at least be able to show that a week from Saturday on the new Pope screen. Uses a, a phone. I wonder if I wonder if the church is selling. Remember the day, good old days, where you could kill a guy, but then just sort of buy forgiveness indulgences. for it. indulgences. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, iPhone. I'd rather have an iPhone 10 than an indulgence, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the relic I want. I'm building a reliquary right, what right color now. Did you favorite, Leo? I uh, favorited the silver. I think that's okay. kind of pretty. What you went for the black? Yeah, I went for space gray. I love the look of the silver because to me it looks the most like the original iPhone of any iPhone Apple's made since. Um, but I just, I, there's something about the black that I really like. And I thought, you know, uh, cosmetically it would match my watch more, which is horrible, but <laughs> I did. I mentioned last time or a couple of times ago, you could favorite it in the store. And a number of yeah. people said, oh, I can't favorite it. Is there a reason well, do you need to be logged in? I did it on the uh, Apple store on iOS. Some people said their carrier status was interfering with it. So again, oh. like I would make sure you've got everything nailed down. Like you're up, like all of that it stuff. It should Call be your carrier in you your, to. see right here, favorites. Yeah. It should be in there. And uh, so the next step from this point on is continue, right? Yep. Oh, wait a minute. Yep. It's blue. What? What? Just for the upgrade program, that'll take you to the. Oh, no, it's not the upgrade. Wait a minute. Oh, damn it! <laughs> so so it you get through all of that. So I got, I got a little it farther than I did last time. It was worth trying. It was worth trying. It was worth trying. That's so funny, guys. It was a little farther than I got last time. So you can favor it, and by doing it, you're kind of bypassing the color choice, the carrier choice. See, I've already chosen T-Mobile's silver 256 gigs. So that's that's that, again that's our recommendation and hey I was able to do it but until that select goes blue I can't do anything more after that but just put tap the heart make it a favorite uh, and and yeah I think I would I think Renee and I'll be ordering something a few hours before just to make sure our credit cards in yep. there and I'm I'm gonna do the same thing yep I'm no I'm I'm in with you it's I don't I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get I know that if I don't get one in the first month it could be quite a while. So I'm just going to, uh, I can return it in two weeks. I'll, yeah, I'll see what I can do. But I do think, I think that everybody that gets one this year is probably going to order it in the first, what, 30 minutes? You think yeah. 30? Uh -huh. You think that long? No, I'm, I'm being very conservative. I think it might be the first five. Yeah. I mean, if the Andalusians don't take all of them. 
<laughs> um, is that what Andorans are called? Andalusians? Oh, and Andorians. Sorry. Are, 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 are you allowed to order two? Right. Uh, God, don't order two. Yeah, you should always order two because you, you sell it on the, the other one online for the price that you paid for the first I'll one. I'll order two if I can. Actually, well, I'll need to because we'll because uh, Lisa will want one. I'm going to order two because then I'm going to try selling it on online for twice, for twice, twice the you pay for it. <laughs> pay for it itself. Phone. That's you're the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> it's your oh, fault. Alex. That's it. You're, oh, you're why I can't get a, a Super Nintendo classic. <laughs> I have four of them. I, I'm still. You can if you yeah, you see, I, eBay price, how, how many does Andy have? Andy has none. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have one. I I, I missed the boat Alex until it was. You, on. you no, would I need two extra hands. So you, you could like be playing a different game with each hand and still have like one on each foot. No, I have That's to admit, how many Super Nintendo. Terry loves have. iPhone, but eBay is dumb. I, I'm afraid that all I have is a. I have. I just have an Oculus system, and that's it. I when uh, when I get my new iPhone 10, I'm going to glue a tracker there you go. onto it. I'm going to make sure. So that Alex can't sell it on eBay? Is that <laughs> our show, yeah, this is mine, damn it. Our show today brought to you by Tracker, the coin-sized, lightweight tracking device that makes sure you don't lose your stuff. Notice I've got mine on my keys. Uh, I keep one in my wallet. I keep one in my uh, briefcase. I put it in my luggage. You can attach up to 10 trackers to your phone. And then a couple of great things. You get the separation alerts, which I, which I love, because that means if I leave my phone behind, the tracker beeps at me. And if I leave my keys behind, the phone beeps at me. And if I need to find my keys, there's a little button right there on the phone that I can press... And the keys go off, and the LEDs on this, this is the tracker pixel, the LEDs light up. That's really handy if, you know, you lose it in the, you know, in the covers or on a pillow, under a pillow or a, a sofa. Really makes it easier to find. And, of course, if I, uh, if I can't find my phone, I press the tracker button. This is the easiest way to find my phone. And my phone, even if it's silenced, will make, make noise. No, no, wait a minute. They're, they're all going off now. But the, the, the best the best thing is, and see, there's a map of where my my keys are, were last seen. Now, that's key because this is a Bluetooth device. It's not a GPS in the tracker to be light and to get better battery life. It's just Bluetooth, but Bluetooth LE, by the way, so it really gets great battery life. But that's the beauty of this because with Bluetooth LE, if anybody using the track has the tracker app on their phone and walks by your tracker, no matter where it is in the world, they'll ping you. You can turn on notifications and you'll automatically get pinged every time somebody sees your device anywhere in the world. And with 5 million trackers in the world, it means pretty much everywhere. There's people walking around with tracker on their phone. I love that. It's the largest crowd locate network in the world. 30-day money back guarantee, so you're never at risk. And the tracker is unique in one other way. You can change the battery. So after a year or so, when the tracker does lose its juice, no problem. It's easy to open it up and put it in a little, one of those little coin-sized batteries you get at the drugstore and get another year or so on your tracker. Go to the tracker.com slash MacBreak and you'll get 20% off your order right now. What? What? That's a great deal. Even if you've already ordered some trackers, order some more. The tracker.com slash MacBreak. 20% off. This is a great holiday gift, by the way. The tracker.com slash MacBreak. Stop losing your stuff. Start using. I like that it, it'll track. set off an alarm when you're walking away. I think <laughs> that separation alert has saved yeah. my bacon so many times. Yeah. So yeah. many I, times. After after a couple after they became a sponsor and I saw the discount, I bought one and now it's I've got one hidden on my bike. Yeah, that's smart. It's good for a bike, I think. Yes, yeah. bikes do tend to wander off, don't they? Well, you know, they they go where roads tend to ramble and where people have bolt cutters. <laughs> Rambling boat cutters. Hey, as long as we're uh, talking about uh, uh, the iPhone ten. Some people are wondering, well, we've got a HomePod. We've got uh, <laughs> iMac Pro. Maybe there'll be another event. Craig Federighi <laughs> says, no. I think we're all keynoted out for the season. Well, there it's yeah, official. I, mean, I think we knew this. <laughs> yeah. I think I, th I think that also indicates that all this all the stuff we saw at the uh, at the Steve Jobs Theater that was just like fake sprinklers and fake outlets just to get it past the fire code. Now they really <laughs> before they have another event they really have now to. They got to finish it, huh? Yeah. So you don't need to. You know they've spoken about the HomePod before. Uh, you don't need to. Yeah. You don't need to 
say anything more about it. The iMac Pro, I think, is is pretty clear. The, I was, you know, I was holding out hope that they might announce a Mac Mini next nah. year. Next year, mm, maybe Mac not. Pro, Mac, Mac Pro next year. next year. I think. I think that if they if they release the Mac Pro um, as a rack mountable modular system, the Mac Mini would probably be short lived after that because the main use, I mean, almost everybody I know, I'm sure that some people have them at home, but I think almost everybody I know that has Mac minis, the reason you have a Mac mini is because you can easily rack mount it. Uh, you know, they, no, they also disagree. pitched That's... it as a, as a, like an introduction to Macs for PC users. They home just theater system. That, you know, oh, theater yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, it's lots of their education. They, if, 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 if Apple doesn't sell a Mac at that price point, it's kind of a really bad sign for Mac in general. Because that that's where the, the people own screens, people own keyboards, the ability to buy something for five or six hundred dollars and have a Mac desktop. That's a use that the iMac isn't fulfilling. That's a use that uh, that the notebooks aren't fulfilling. Again, I'd be really concerned if Apple were to drop the Mac Mini just, in, I, in I, its I, current Tim form. Tim Cook just, says it's an important product. He says we're you know we're still you know. yeah. Well, that's like saying that he's an important part of this presidential administration. He has <laughs> I like him. He has my full support. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have to say that 20, 2017 is the year in which I, you know, it's going to be a make or break whatever, year. I think you're whatever, right. Yeah. Well, well, no, whenever, whenever Apple says we love this product, it's an important part of a future. I'm like, OK, I thank you for making noises with your mouth. <laughs> it, it took more effort than to not make noises with your mouth on this subject. But they've been ignoring the Mac for so long, so consistently that I'm not listening until you actually put something in a box at the Apple store that I can actually look at. Well, we know there will be an iMac Pro because, according to 9to5Mac, Apple suppliers are upping production of the Radeon Pro Vega GPUs that are included in the iMac Pro. Also, Apple announced it. Which I do find and Apple announced it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do find it kind of, you know, it's frustrating. I mean, the... Um, the Radeon boards, from a professional perspective, are not as good as the NVIDIA boards. No, we want and NVIDIA. So yeah. But, of course, NVIDIA Apple wants does to, uh, well, that, that. That's What is it? Uh, Apple wants to control the, the drivers, and NVIDIA wants to control the drivers. And so, what is it? The CL? Uh, is, OpenCL. OpenCL. Is that a big and part? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that the, that the NVIDIA boards uh, do that, um, that it, from a heavy graphics perspective, um, professional graphics perspective it works yeah. better. The Radeon cards tend to break things up into much smaller little chunks that are harder to manage. And right, so yeah, my understanding is Nvidia won't let Apple write to the metal, and Apple really wants to write to the oh. metal. Oh, that's an impact. They won't let Apple do what? They won't. They won't let Apple access the hardware directly. They want them to go through Nvidia, and Apple wants to access the hardware directly. You know what? And AMD will let them do whatever they want because they're not Nvidia. Yeah, and I understand <laughs> both sides, but I could see. I don't. If I were Apple, I would say no, no. We we need to optimize performance, but as a result, well, because are getting a suboptimal. Well, they compete too because Apple has Metal too, and Nvidia has CUDA, and I'm sure a lot right. of Apple people want to access CUDA, but Apple probably wants Metal to run directly on the hardware as well. Right. Oh well. Mm. The operating system is very, very dependent. The Apple, the, the the Mac operating system is very dependent on on the graphics card, unlike other operating systems. And so, it like if something goes wrong or something gets late yeah. to be updated, it becomes a really it, big deal. It I also wonder. points to the, the it also points to the importance of this particular iMac. It's like that the 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 Mac platform with the processors they're using with the integration they've got. It's so powerful now that if you're going to make a Mac Pro, you have to say. We really have to say that this is for graphics. It really has to be optimized for VR. It really has to be optimized for video production because almost any other use that's not graphics intensive, the iMac can really handle it just as well, or the or even a MacBook Pro can handle it just as well. So that's the point at which you got to shave. You got to keep shaving millimeters and grams wherever you can because that's the only thing that's, that's going to get you to that destination. Moving right along, no event. Oh, Apple's on a, a, a Apple's. Uh, Arendt's in an interview with BuzzFeed News when asked if she was the next going to be the next CEO. She's senior vice president of retail. Angela Arendt said it's fake news. Oh, don't use that term. That's the term. World, she, don't, don't use that please, term. Let's all Everybody. Stop. Cook said we're preparing as many people as I can to be CEO. <laughs> What? <laughs> you can be CEO. You can be CEO. <laughs> what? Can I? Can, okay. Ne, whoever's doing the drone, the the drone videos, the new campus. Is there a Thunderdome anywhere <laughs> on the campus? It's, it's, I just got a weird CEO. permission. It's going to be he team says, CEO. I train. He says my job is to prepare as many people as I can to be CEO. That's what I'm doing. The board makes the decision. 
Uh, Angela, I'm going to say your fake news is fake news. I think that that actually is probably fairly credible. She's, she seems you know, to be the most likely. She le was CEO at uh, uh, the Raincoat Burberry. Company, Burberry. Burberry. She left. Yeah. Note, she still is wearing his Burberry when she was on stage. So mm -hmm. she's not. Well, she still has taste and refinement. She, still has she didn't leave that behind. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, former CEO, they must have proffered her something pretty amazing to take a job as an SVP after being CEO. Well, being head of Apple of Apple store is almost like being president of a company. I agree. It's, it's such a, good a big thing, organization. But I think it also wouldn't hurt if you said, and you'd be in the running, at least in the running for CEO. Her, Jeff Williams, there's a bunch of really good candidates there. <laughs> How old is Tim Cook? Just asking Siri. Tim Cook is 56. 56. So he's not going to retire for five to 10 years. Yep. But, you know. Um, Senate is asking why Apple removed VPN apps from the China store. An open letter from Patrick Leahy and Ted Cruz noting that China has an abysmal human rights record. And they are, quote, concerned that Apple may be enabling the Chinese government's censorship and surveillance of the internet. I think would, I think the answer would be because it's the law in China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They asked, what has Apple done to promote free speech in China? Is that really their job? Uh, and whether it's pushed for human rights and better treatment of oppressed groups in the country. Tim Cook, of course, in the earnings call a couple of weeks ago, said we'd rather not remove apps, but we do. But like we do in other countries, we follow the law where we do business. Apple has not responded to the letter officially yet. Yeah, I don't. I, I I have to question the motives of those two particular senators, but nonetheless, I'm glad to see that Apple and Google and Facebook are sort of having their feet. People pointing out that maybe this isn't such a good thing when you kowtow to even even when you have you're complying with the law. Perhaps some laws are not there to be complied with. That's where you say goodbye to the market. Yeah, um, it's challenging because you. Do, I mean, of course, you, we expect international companies operating in the U.S. to adhere to our laws. We'd expect nothing less than that, right? And there's they also, like, like, different opinions. Like, some Apple has a long history of believing that it can affect change through engagement. That's why, like, they haven't pulled out of areas where, you know, they're, like, they try to make areas where they mine elements, for example, safer. And they try to make all these things. And they say that if we pull out, they'll just get worse and worse. If we stay engaged, maybe we can change it. And you can agree or disagree with it, but they've been remarkably consistent in applying that policy. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but that's it's it's different when you have a company like Google or a company like Facebook where they're providing communications infrastructure that connects a region to the entire world. Um, it's it's it is a complicated it's a complicated issue. Sometimes there is a benefit to making sure you stay in there at least with the ability to influence and at least try to figure out a way around the law that while complying with the law that gives people in that region the the, the resources that they need. But nonetheless, that it's. Yet another item on that long list of things that Apple needs to be vocal about, saying that we under we we get it. We don't. We're not just simply playing along with whatever a regime tells us to do. We do have our eyes on this issue. And well, also, there are laws like companies. Sorry, Alex. I was going to say is that, that you know Apple hasn't given up some way to break into the phone to to China. They haven't. You know, there's a lot of things. That, no, in fact, that, you could still use a VPN. This just takes the apps out of the App Store. That wasn't the only way to use a VPN with an iPhone. You can enterprise. You can install it through enterprise yeah. or through test yeah. flight or through yeah. their mechanisms. Yeah. But there is also there are laws that say, for example, you, like I don't know if they're still in in force, but there were laws that saying you couldn't sell certain levels of encryption to other countries. And these are lawmakers, and they could say American companies can't provide XYZ services to certain countries if they wanted to as well. So yeah, they can, they can yell to Apple all they want, but they also are in a position where they can affect change if they want it. You know what I almost forgot with the iPhone 10? And the first thing I'm going to do next week when I get my new iPhone 10, because I'm going to, and an emoji. <laughs> yes. Except maybe we shouldn't call it an emoji. Apple's being sued by the Japanese company that owns the trademark. Well, that's the question. Is, the question is whether they own it or not. I think that Apple is basically taking advantage of a technicality that it appears that they may have registered it to a non-existing company. Uh, and so, you know, in, you know, in some... There is an Animoji app on iOS. I didn't there, realize There was this. an iPhone by, uh, by Cisco right. when yeah. Apple launched the iPhone, right? But yeah. the trademark that was... That was uh, gotten may have not may not be prop, completely proper. And so I think that it's... I have a very... I have a feeling that Apple looked at this pretty carefully um, and felt like they had a pretty good chance of winning. Well, remember um, that even when iPhone was not un unencumbered, yeah. when they named right. it iPhone, they had to, 
They've done this has happened so many yeah, times. Yeah, Cisco owned the patent yeah. on And when you're a company as big as Apple, you work it out somehow. Uh Apple actually had filed to in September to cancel Animoji's uh, the eMonster Animoji trademark. And so the registration is under review. Apparently, uh, yeah, you read the story, obviously, Alex, because I'm just repeating what you said. So, you know what'll happen. You know exactly what'll happen. E-Monster and Apple will sit down at a table, and Apple will say, "How big of a check?" Well, it'll. it'll I think. If, it, I think they'll wait until they figure out whether they win or lose that. If they invalidate the trademark, then they're not it gonna doesn't even matter, anything. right? But you know, and the lawyer gets it's the lawyer cheaper gets the to. Car, not even. <laughs> how much money? Yeah. yeah, how much money does Apple have to give E-Monster? Give ten million dollars? Right, it'd be easy. No, yeah. not even. I don't Chicken think. feed. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. Yeah, how about more money than you've made so far with that app? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> like, dollar, like, one just, dollar app. Let's just call it a day. Uh, Apple versus Samsung. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I just won't die. <laughs> one more time. So the Supreme Court sent it back to the lower courts. Judge Lucy Coe says, we're going to do it a fourth time. This is the Apple versus Samsung trial over the... <laughs> Over the is this the trade dress or the uh, action? I believe there's several. There was a design patent, yeah, it's and there's trade dress. There's trade One dress. One of my favorite design. Twitter accounts, uh, Counter Notions Contra on Twitter, keeps tweeting like Judge Lucy Co. orders Eddie Q to take the field in Warriors game <laughs> uh, because she comes up with really great, really great things for Apple to do. All the time. Uh, the yeah. long running litigation. I'm reading from uh, Ars Technica's uh, story, Joe Mullen. The long running litigation roller coaster has included so many turns. It's hard to keep track the case was filed in 2011 six years ago went to trial a jury trial in 2012 that's when remember apple won one billion dollars then they had more toast trial uh, hearings and that was whittled down and then there was a 2013 retrial for damages in front of another jury then the appeals court kicked out trademark related damages altogether leaving only the trade dress issues meanwhile a second case moved forward in which apple sued over a new generation of samsung products that went to jury trial in 2014 that resulted in a 120 million dollar damage verdict that verdict was thrown out on appeal reinstated on subsequent appeal then the first <laughs> yeah then the first case samsung said all right we'll pay you 548 million dollars then the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, the damage, the damages was all wrong. But they didn't say how to do it right. They just sent it back. The high court threw out the $399 millions uh, dollars of the damages that Apple won. Yes, or, uh, not yesterday, but I think on Sunday, uh, Lucy Co. published a 35-page order scheduling a hearing this, later this week in a whole new jury trial it is the case that never ends i think it's, i think it's the apple's apple advantage for it to stay sauce in for court. every american mcdonald's customer yes such one for everyone <laughs> go ahead alex no, i think i think that it is uh it's an apple apple's advantage to keep it in court for as long as possible because it will affect thought processes on the other side because if you lose this for some reason it it could unravel to other things and so you know i think they want to just keep them thinking about it all the time you know, that, that that they, you know, and I don't know whether, I think they've diverged enough at this point. I don't know if it really matters. But um, but I'm sure they'll keep on taking this one as far as it'll go. Yeah, the, Joe's article goes on and on, which I, and I won't, uh, with details on what Coe's uh, uh, document said in terms of how it would be determined whether Samsung had infringed on Apple. She did say Apple should bear the burden of proof in determining the quote article of manufacturer which i think is a term of art for something i don't know what the hell it all means but yeah. good lord fourth jury trial um and, and how much do you think these companies have spent on legal fees to this point not More a billion most companies have a lot there, there there's so many there it's getting to be like world war one where people forget yeah, about trench the, both sides are, yeah. they, they're just getting dug in deeper and deeper and deeper and both then both have good sides to keep on going uh i think samsung's reason is a, because yeah, they yeah they did do some things they shouldn't have done, but also and there's actually an illustration in that Ars Technica article that Apple is insisting that they own a black rectangle with rounded corners, and <laughs> I like to say no, you don't. It's like and I can just go into my closet right now and show you lots of products that uh, that predate the iPhone that are black rectangles with rounded Look corners. Look at Sue, don't do it, Andy. Yep. 
it's 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 hard to know it's hard to pick a side to actually root for because you feel as though both sides are being jerks and that if this were a movie pitch it would be that the lead the, the lead lawyers on both sides are actually in love with each other and they this is how they keep the relationship going i just want to keep seeing him i just want to keep seeing her <laughs> what if we what if we what if we say that the damages should be should be do be prorated based on the trademark appeal in Canada as opposed to applied towards this that'll give us an appeal yes uh, do you care attention. what Excellent. was uh, what what phone was is buying <laughs> was says he's not getting an iPhone 10 and he's not apparently getting the iPhone 8 cuz it's the same as the iPhone 6 this is to CNBC, he said this will be the first year he doesn't upgrade to a new iPhone. I'd rather he wait. Says and that watch every that year, one. though, doesn't he? Does he? Don't I think he's like being quoted first of about all, saying that. I'd so like often. to point out that probably there's boxes of iPhones at Steve's house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am sure Apple sends him anything and everything. <laughs> he says he's using an iPhone eight. Oh, okay, but he does. He's <laughs> I'm happy with my iPhone one. 8, which is the same as the iPhone 7, which is the same as iPhone 6. So maybe he didn't buy it. Maybe that's I don't yeah. know. Well, also, didn't he post a picture? Uh, post a picture of like from a hotel room of like his essential. This is the this is the stuff that I travel with, and there were like eight different kinds of phones like laid out on the bed. <laughs> yeah. So He's I wouldn't a be big nerd. Yeah. Anybody at his level, even if they didn't found Apple. Every movie star gets a, fr you know, they just send this out to all of those people, right? I mean, it's buzz in your marketing. Yeah. It's buzz also, marketing. Also, also yeah. at that level, your your phone is called Becca, as in Becca. <laughs> when's my next appointment, yeah, yeah, Becca? Yeah, Becca. And it says Hornmacher. Okay. It says Tashmacher. All right, all right. You guys, you can explain this better probably than I can. Uh oh, iPhone calculator. Okay. Let's, oh, yeah, I can explain this. Yeah, I know what's going on, but let's just do it. Okay. One plus two plus three e equals three. Wait a minute. Let me let me clear that. One plus two plus three wait. equals 51. No, wait a minute. Let's do that again. One plus two plus three equals six. Yes. I did it too fast. Too slow. <laughs> what? <laughs> So there's an animation issue, right? Yeah, the animation for the operators, the animation for the numbers are fine, but the animation for the operators is slow enough and blocks input enough that it doesn't register the second plus sign. So you end up getting one plus two, three equals 24, which is, you know, hireable. Now, somebody in the chat room is saying, Scooter X, who I trust, says this happened in iOS 9 and 10 as well. I guess nobody noticed it. We all thought it was an iOS 11 issue this is fixable there is it because it it's a problem in general yeah, it, should with animation. Have it should, it should, it should, should have been have fixed shipped. before it ever i it's filed fixable. a radar for it i put you, the number on twitter yesterday good man you should what you should do is cancel an animation when another button press is sense it yes sensed. that's all make it interruptible it's easy yep. uh the fact that nobody noticed this is bizarre and the thing is it's serious only in the sense that okay once you know it you're going to carefully type numbers the problem is if you're doing a lot of calculating it'd be very easy to inadvertently once just do yep. it a little too fast and then your whole thing is screwed up. So and this if you is just basically an unusable. You'll see it. Yeah, it's an you unusable. Just tap like plus over and over again. Yeah, it's an unusable calculator. It's unusable. You shouldn't use it. It's too risky to get it wrong. Use pcalc. Pcalc doesn't have that problem, right? Nope. Use Siri. Pcalc is uh, use Siri. Yeah. Siri doesn't get it Siri's wrong. Good. But Calc if you bot, but right? see a lot of people use calculators like this to like for tax times coming. You might add up a column of numbers. No, that would get you in trouble. And you would get it wrong. My wife can do it very fast. So that would be mm. a disaster. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what? What <laughs> Did they not try it? <laughs> I mean, I don't, it, it's still on the beta. Like, the, I have the latest beta, and it's still a problem. So, well, I mean, it it's, won't this be is just one of those time. things that should never happen. Yeah. And the thing is that this is getting a lot of attention, so it'll get fixed. But there's probably numerous things like this that haven't gotten the attention that still need to be fixed. So... There used to be a joke that people didn't carry the plus size versions enough, and that's why they dropped frames. And if you forced them to carry the plus size versions, <laughs> they'd see the, f the frame drops and they'd be okay. so annoyed by it. They this get is fixed. on an iPhone 8 with an A11 Bionic, the fastest chip ever put in a phone. <laughs> yep. Fast, but it doesn't matter if it's fast if the code says, and then wait <laughs> till yep. the screen fades in and fades out. Hmm. It's fast, but limitations to quality control is always faster.
Yeah. You have a Ferrari, but the door is locked. Good luck. You do wonder. Uh, I mean, there's presumably somebody in charge of calculator, right? Maybe not. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm the guy. Uh, what do you do? I, I work on calculator. I do. Well, remember uh, that remote wasn't updated for like years because the one guy who wrote yep. it got transferred. So yeah. nobody was even looking at it. Project. We yeah. might, that might be what's going on with calculator. Right. Like the, the calculator guy is now working at Google. And maybe <laughs> those animations are system wide and he, he, he didn't check it because. Or it, it could also be that like that's on a list of bugs. That's like 37th in the list of things that they consider to be far more critical and no one was complaining. So they'll get to right. that eventually. Right. Now it's getting a lot of attention. It'll be first. And there's something else sitting at spot 36 that won't get attention until they yeah. fix the yeah. crash bug here or the yeah. memory leak there. So Something. at this point, though, this uh, my strong advice is do not use the Apple iPhone calculator. Period. It's you, you, they can't guarantee unless your you're going to go really, really slow. Very and they don't have. I, did they have a tape? Because if you had a tape, you could. You know, some calculators have a tape. Yeah. Pcalc has a tape. They don't have a tape though. There's no way you can audit your results. So you should. I, like, I, I, don't, think that, I don't think that. I don't, how do you number, change the paper? Use a spreadsheet on the tape. <laughs> well, it, they, you'll get a red stripe when you're down to the end. And okay. Just okay. All right. Did you see this number, global app revenues? Now, this is not just iOS. This is uh, Google, too. For one quarter, Q3, three months, revenues of $17 billion, according to App Annie. Uh, Google Play is green. iOS is blue. Uh, so you see, actually, there's, there's considerably more downloads for uh, Google Play, but... The numbers are staggering. The uh, the total app downloads twenty six billion in three months. People like apps. This yes. is a category that didn't exist in two thousand seven. Yep. yep. Well, it was fr like I remember for my Palm Trio, I had to go to a variety of websites. I'd forget which store I bought what app on. It cost like thirty bucks for a yellow sticky notes app, and it would crash my phone half the time. And yeah. we've come light amazing, years with centralized stores yeah. and easy purchases and. Yeah, we're probably not that far away from some phone makers saying we will give you this. This phone costs us one hundred and eighty dollars to manufacture. We will sell it to you for twenty five dollars. But through the Google Play Store and through the Apple Store, there's an affiliate link so that basically we get affiliate money from all your app store purchases. I think that if someone did that within a year, they'd say, guess what? It's it's a dollar now. Just send us a dollar. We'll give you the phone. We've, we're sitting. Our, we're, we're building our own spaceship campus with all the money we're making just from That's affiliate purchases off of apps. I mean, the big problem there is that Google still doesn't offer affiliate revenue for Google right. Play. You know, Apple's done it since the beginning. Google still doesn't do it, which, you know, be nice. <laughs> so by the way, if you want to see the other graph, th this is this is really, this is the telling graph. So the graph of worldwide app downloads by store, Q3 2017. Green is a Google Play, you know, a lot, <laughs> lot bigger, right? But then look at revenue. Whoop, yeah. flips completely. Uh, and that's been I, the case yeah. for, forever. Gross consumer spend by store, 90% greater for iPhone uh, in Q3 2016, 95% greater for iPhone in Q3 2016. How much of that is Clash of Clans expansion pack? Jeez. <laughs> well, or, you know, Simpsons donuts. Yeah. Or <laughs> Field runner points. I don't know if it includes in-app in -app purchases. It must, right? I think it has to because so much of the economy yeah. has moved to in-app purchases. Yeah. Yeah. All the top selling, all the top revenue games, uh, apps are games with in-app purchases. So, yeah. I mean, that's really become the model where you download almost everything now for free and then you upgrade it to whatever version. I even was getting OmniGraffle and, it, you know, you download it for free and then it says, do you want to unlock the pro version or do you want to unlock the... Wasn't there a big article about the new upcoming Star Wars game where they had to completely redesign it because they didn't put in the way for you to give them micropayments? <laughs> it was like a, a single player experience and people weren't going to spend money on it. So they had to redesign the whole thing to have micropayments. How about this one? This is depressing. Worldwide, total time spent in apps. Remember, this is for a three-month period. 325 billion hours. Wow. <laughs> John, you and I, probably half of that playing Field Runners Attack alone. <laughs> We could have, we could have cured. I don't play attack. <laughs> what, are they gonna, what are they gonna use the phone for? Okay, you guys hooked on uh, we blame Alex Tele Lindsay because he said, he told us when Phil Rare's attack came out, John immediately downloaded it and started playing. I did shortly thereafter, and he won't play it. It's because it's uh, the only time I play Field Runners is when I'm taking off on a plane, which I do often. <laughs> yeah, you have to be online. I, that is really the bane of the App Store. That in app purchases one, you must be online is two. It's very frustrating. Yeah, so I mean, I, I uh, and I only, I'm only, I'm still on level two. On, uh, Maze 2. 
Really? Well, no, I've got I beat them all. Oh, okay. But I'm trying to get two million on each one, so I, oh, I just kind of slowly work insane. my way. And I got to tell you, in level two, it's really hard because it's one of those ones that just is a rush. And getting over one point seven is has taken me, uh, you know, four months. Now, Apple every day has an Apple uh, app of the day. In fact, this is a this was a new feature in the new App Store, yeah. right? They had an app of the week before that, but app of the day is yep. new. Uh, is it free? No. No, I mean, sometimes they're free apps, sometimes they're paid apps, but, it, but, they, but it's not a guarantee that it'll be free. Because that's what Amazon did with its app of the day. They they kind of strong-armed app developers to give it away. Well, they just day. didn't tell them. They yeah, just gave it Here, here. <laughs> it's free. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is just a feature. Yep. Being featured in the App Store boosts downloads by 1,474... A lot. 1,747%. Game's a little wow. less, about half that. But it's a big deal. Getting that I was talking about app of the day thing. I was talking to a developer and I guess they got um App to the Day. Uh, app of the day and it was a quarter million dollars in a day. God. Of, of orders. <laughs> makes you jealous. Like it was just makes your year. Yeah. Thank God they don't do that uh with uh, podcasts because because <laughs> we we well, have been the of life of tens. So the app of the day today is Lego Life. The game of the so they do an app in a game, and the game of the day, which is a fun one, which I've played, is does not commute. So it's not always just new stuff. Yeah, drive safely. Yeah, they're doing not. a great job. The whole editorial team is game. is aces there. That's all. That's all really been uh, uh, be big, bigly upgraded in the the newest uh, app store on uh, iOS 11. I really like it. Yeah. Behind well, the before, scenes. I mean, the biggest thing they did was like they would make the list and maybe write a blurb, and now they're essentially publishing a mini magazine every day. And oh, this is like Flipboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love this. And there's interviews and tips and tricks. They're smart, uh, although they really are. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. It's so bright. Let me turn my brightness down just a little bit. They really are uh, giving somebody a big ass plug. I mean, you know, that's amazing. Here's and they're competing error. with websites. I mean, no, no, yeah. no hard feelings there. Yeah, app of the day from yesterday was Hopster. Game of the day was Polybridge. So uh, I I notice I see this a lot. I mean, usually when I go to the app store, I'm going right to updates, right? But uh, I notice I see this front page almost you know every day probably. And they're yeah, I, I that they had a lot of. So Oh, uh, on, on, on top of that, I'm glad to see a, another intrusion of the new the, a, a, Apple made the simple tweak to iOS uh, by simply saying, what if we have a heavy font that can actually represent stuff that gives certain parts of the experience a little bit more emphasis than the rest? And I think that's really transformed iOS. We're certainly seeing that in other parts of the, the mainstream iOS when you're seeing people who are using the regular text renderer. So that's I, 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 I hate to I hate to say that this is the this is my big excitement about the new app store. But it's like I'm glad to see Apple. Apps that really look, that really have that extra level of polish, that really see that Apple is trying to move uh, iOS forward in the interface, as opposed to saying, eh, we got it right three years ago, it's good enough. Yeah, so the thing that I like, too, is that the App Store was primarily becoming a sideways track. Like, people would see a link on the web or from their friends or in social and just go to an app and download it. And it wasn't really a destination. And now they've made it, like, if you're bored oh. and you just want a new app and you want to see something, they've made it a place to go every day again. Our show today brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Are you looking for work? Go to ZipRecruiter.com to apply. And if you're hiring, know this. ZipRecruiter is the only, the only job site that brings you qualified candidates. ZipRecruiter is amazing. When you post to ZipRecruiter, you post to 100 plus job boards. That, 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 means, that means you're getting your job listing to the broadest possible audience, that means your chance of finding the perfect person is that much better. In fact, I think we can say, you've got an opening, there's probably a perfect person for that job just waiting, looking for work right now, but you gotta get to them. ZipRecruiter's great for filling a position in any industry, anywhere in the country. Are you in need of great talent for your business? Especially if you're short on time, you're shorthanded, I know you are, you're hiring. You don't have to get lost in a huge stack of resumes to find your perfect hire. You just need smarter tools. ZipRecruiter is as smart as it gets. You post your job to 100 job boards with one click, but, and this is really important, you're not going to get a million applications into your inbox or a million phone calls at your desk. All the applicants roll into the ZipRecruiter interface 
which makes it so easy for you to screen, rate, and hire the right person fast. You can use screening questions to eliminate people that you just know you don't want. And ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work, actively notifying qualified candidates. They have millions of resumes themselves about your job within minutes of posting. So you're going to get the best possible matches. In fact, 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate through the site in just one day. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike those other guys, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire, and you can try it free. Now, that's smart right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Look at the million-plus companies, best companies in the world that have used ZipRecruiter. We've used ZipRecruiter. We love it. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Try it free right now. The smart way, the smartest way to hire. Apple is hiring a former Amazon studio exec. I hope it's not the guy who got fired for no. sexual <laughs> harassment. Yeah, that would, no, no, this is somebody else. Morgan Wandel uh, will take the role of lead uh, international creative development for a worldwide video at Apple. So he's reporting to the two Sony execs who now lead their uh, programming efforts. They're put. There's no question they're putting money into this. Do you remember that, that episode where West Wing went to Hollywood and they kept offering people deals? For what? For development. Well, what do I do? You develop. Do I do anything? No, you develop. <laughs> Shepard Project yeah. through development. You develop. You're a developer. He worked on Sneaky Pete. He's mm. also worked on The Man in the High Castle, Goliath, Jack Ryan, The Marvelous, Mrs. Maisel. You know, I have to say, one of the problems Amazon's happening having is they're having a hard time finding a uh, successor to Transparent. A lot of these Amazon originals, not real inspiring, including... It's Sneaky it, Pete. From what I've heard, it's, it's getting harder and harder because a lot of the really experienced showrunners are all getting yep. snap, snapped up. I yeah. mean, they're, and there's, the money that they're making now is astronomical. I mean, there's so much. This, there's never been more competition. I mean, we are definitely in the golden age of of content. You know, from you know, I and, think all uh, the from all from the all Netflix the Marvel stuff is that Whedon, the Joss Whedon team, is are all doing those. The uh, Steve McKnight's and the yeah, they've got a sense. lot of talent yeah. there. Yeah, we didn't sell. Well, it's also bulletproof. How so? <laughs> No, well, it's it's nice to be making a series where they know well they know that they're going to you're you're going to get to make the twelve episodes you're contracted for, and also if everybody hates it, well, that's okay because you might still get signed for next season. There's a, a, how many how many uh, shows like even Marvel shows have we looked at that are like on streaming that really t really tanking, uh, and. I guess they still get renewed because it's all about it. A, it's all about inventory, and B, you're working for a company that is not posting a profit yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know who's really coming on strong? In fact, uh, they just announced they're going to spend eight billion dollars this year. Is Netflix? Yeah. And yeah. They also said half of our content is going to be original content. So they're they're the ones who have the. And right. it's good. And they're they're mapping up people. Like I crazy. mean, they they saw it coming, and I think that they, you know, they they are basically doing HBO but more aggressively than HBO. You know, they, they are, and their issue is, is that they have to cater to everyone. So if you look at the kind of content they're, ma they're making, it's not just big films and it's not just House of Cards. It's the chef's table, it's documentaries, it's, yeah. you know, foreign films, because they're looking at, and, and, and the thing is, is that they are positioned, and so on Amazon to some degree, but Netflix more than anyone else, is positioned to know exactly what their audience wants because they have all of their viewing history. So they're able to say, this is the kind of show that if we that if we build that, you know, we know that there's a pretty good chance that they will come. Yeah. Also, it's it's great to have this inventory based idea of production where it doesn't matter how this how this does in the first season, right. so long as it's a nice addition to this big block of content we've got. I, I, I got to tell you, if, if nothing else, these streaming services are a real shot in the arm for just the documentary format, where there is it's it's not as though you're guaranteed if you make a good documentary that you can sell it to one of the streaming services, but there's a better chance before back when it's like maybe we'll get into Sundance, maybe we'll get it some limited distribution. Maybe we will be able to sell it to PBS. It's now well, if we get, we'll it will have its main life on Netflix or on Hulu. Uh, the they will buy things like the Barkley Marathons, which isn't a, which is a wonderful documentary, but it's not really mass appeal. It doesn't have that hook uh, of a supersize me or something like that. But again, it will be out there and it'll be out there for at least a couple of years. So that's such a beautiful, beautiful thing that it's doing. Anybody got a firewire? Anybody got a firewire cable? Uh, because I have Ooh, the birthday boy. 
16 years ago yesterday, the iPod was introduced. A thousand songs. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? <laughs> a thousand songs in your pocket. And you have the mechanical. I, I miss the mechanical. The mechanical click wheel. Oh, man. Uh, it had a uh, five gigabyte. Five gigabytes. I have more RAM than that. <laughs> five gigabyte. One point in inch okay. hard drive. Capable of holding a thousand songs. You want to see the first iPod commercial? I want to see it again. Let's let's relive this memory. I don't know what that was. This is it. I miss the dancing outlines. They look so happy. <laughs> is this Jeff Goldblum or just a Jeff Goldblum lookalike? Oh my God! Is is, is oh, that? Oh, he's a, gonna get up and walk away. Incredible! It even sounds better, doesn't it? So it is all music. So those of you listening probably don't get this fabulous guy who's sitting listening to music on his computer and has now put his iPod on, his headphones, his jacket, and he's Walk. moonwalking out the door. <laughs> Pretty fly for a Mac guy. Thousand songs in your pocket. Wow. Garamond. Remember Garamond? Hey, they wanted Jeff Goldblum, but he doesn't move that fast. So they got a second stringer. There he you go. The first. Ever. The first. Uh, do you want to see the, uh, as long as we're showing videos, this all comes from Mac Rumors. You want to see the, uh, Steve Jobs introducing the iPod? Today. So. Is that Dalrymple? Yeah. We have something really exciting. I didn't get to go to this event. I was working at the site, now, but Jim Latterback went. Apple's been doing went. a lot of great stuff lately. Uh, Let's remember, this wasn't Mac too far after. Uh, last month. An incredibly stunning upgrade to Mac OS X. lower and thirds. Getting rave reviews for it from a lot of you folks in this room. Uh, we updated our whole portable line last week, our power books and our iBooks. And a lot of things going on. He's a little on. subdued. Uh, and we, uh, we lured you here today uh, with the promise of unveiling a breakthrough digital device uh, that's not a Mac. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Still a little company when they So let's uh, yeah, start with yeah. the digital hub. This is a strategy that we announced uh, in January of this year, about nine months ago. Yeah, I remember this was a couple and months after 9-11. That strategy is, is that comics? That we oh, that's probably, no, it looked like tech No, no, that's chalkboard. The that's, or chalkboard, yeah, that's why he's lifestyle. so subdued. You're right, it in probably words, is, yeah. It's we're January being, uh, 2000. We're being surrounded by these amazing digital No, no, this is before 9-11. No, 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 this was November, November 10th, 2001. Oh, okay. And we okay. think that with the appropriate or at least the release date. application software, the Mac can add tremendous value to these devices and become an essential part of your life where you can't get along without it. And that's our digital hub strategy in a nutshell. Now, the most important of these devices are, of course, the digital camera, the digital camcorder. He's the moving DVD so player, much faster than he did later, right? Music players. He would take time to so, let you absorb what he said. How have we when done he stopped it? walking well, around like this. Year, yeah, well, also, also, also remember, this is like 100 people, 150 people. Right. So right. you have to be more intimate. But also, he, you know, one thing that once people do a lot of presentations, they learn not to wander around on stage. Right. You walk and post. You, st you walk to somewhere and you stay, and it's just for the cameras. It's just much easier to get close-ups. We are way ahead of everybody else on this, and Apple's now the and largest Apple is probably the best uh, at it. video editing supplier in the world, both at the pro and the consumer level. We then followed it up in January. With He's iTunes. not even thinking about cameras because they didn't stream it. An incredible right. hit for us. Uh, this is the for the audience, and it just happens they recorded digital it. digital music jukebox player on any platform. Next, we introduced our Super Drive and some of our Power Mac configurations, and we discs. rolled out iDVD, and we have now announced iDVD 2, which will be shipping uh, Whatever early happened November. to iDVD? It's unbelievable. You can make <laughs> your own DVDs that play in out, every went, with DVDs DVD to player, which there are now over yeah. 20 million of uh, in the United States alone. And it's, it's funny, 16 years ago, and yet this seems very really dated. Else yeah. in this area. And lastly, in photography, uh, digital well, that is, uh, we have built you, right you never Mac you never want to do the math of when you were a kid and a movie seemed like an old timey <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now do the math today, like oh my God, Star Wars Episode yeah, One I'm was out. <laughs> the the Honeymooners was on TV. All four of when I had DVD out. came out, I I had a uh, well, a friend who you know basically one of their little okay. cash cows was clients having them print DVDs, and he's here. like, I movie, I so DVD, I out of a job. Yeah, I out of a job. 
And uh, as you know, you hook your camcorder up to iMovie. You import what? your clips. Uh, where's the so iPod here, coming in? Down, oh, my God. Uh, we need a picture of that girl, <laughs> that baby girl uh, now, right yeah, now. She's a teenager. <laughs> All right, let's get to well, We're going to skip ahead to the uh, the iPod part. But holds 150 songs. You get down to a dollar a song. It's an iPod, <laughs> an iPod, drive, and, well, it's really just an iPod. It holds about 1,000 songs and costs about 30 cents a song. So we looked at this and studied all these, and that's where we want to be. That is where we want to be. 30 cents a song? And we are introducing a product today that takes For us storage. exactly there, and that product is called iPod. iMac, iBook, iPod. Yeah. What is iPod? Also, note, note that this iPod is what happens when you're talking to just journalists. Yes, no applause, no, applause, no, no cheers. No. It has CD yeah. quality music, and it plays all of the popular open yeah, format. Yeah, it's chalkboard, right, Andy? Andy knows his uh, fonts, variable yeah. Variable bit rate, uh, WAV, and AIFF. And he's using, this was before uh, Kino came out, but he, he had a custom, it was, basically Kino was developed for him. Yeah, yeah. he didn't like PowerPoint. Yeah, library. so it was a custom presentation huge. manager, which How eventually became a product. How many times have you gone on the road with a CD player and said, oh, God, the CD, I didn't bring the CD I wanted to listen to. To have your whole music library with you at all times is a quantum Do you think the music industry was watching this and thinking, oh, crap, or... The coolest thing about iPod. Uh, not whole, yet. Your entire music library. Um, at that point, they'd already lost the idea of we will have we will control digital music with you because right no one was buying it. Right. Or it they didn't care. No one was believing Never it. Yeah. Possible. And, and there was no store it. behind it, so people still had to right. buy. Well, three major well, the iTunes iPod. store was still, but the iTunes store was there, right? The first one well, is you were able to buy. So, I think you were able to buy songs. We're going to keep a thousand. You able to buy songs at this point? I don't think so. And it fits in your pocket. How, how do the we do reason this? I thought iTunes happened before the iPod. MP3 player. So, huge win. An hour. <laughs> but maybe the coolest thing Wait a minute. is an it hour no battery how life? many songs you have with you if your battery's dead, right? So we have built in an extraordinary battery into iPod. Right, right, it ten, hours oh, ten hours of battery. And that is ten hours of hour. continuous music. Ten hours. You love that ten it's, hours. It's an interesting it's number, isn't it? Because that's what they, of course, battery. that must be their benchmark. That's what the iPad does computers. as well. So iTunes store opened in April twentieth, two thousand three. Right. So this ten hour battery the iPod was really just something you could just drag on to before. Then. On that's why the music industry was not worried. You still had to buy the music from. Maybe the cool thing. But they were, but they were already negotiating. I'm certain. Carries all the data oh, yeah. from the Mac to iPod. And this is a nostalgic point. I really miss those like so, high contrast super twist L C D screens. Okay. I still think they're cool. I wanna see the uh, see the audience here. So you recognize yeah. anybody? Hey, there's in the Tim audience? Cook. There's Tim Cook in the front row, dark hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. You're kidding yeah. me. Yeah. Really? There he is. There he is. Yeah. Wait a minute, let's see. Wow. There's, this there's, is, there's is John, that right? Tim Cook you're saying? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Let's see. I want to see more front row. Who's down the very end? Um, this one here. Yeah, that looks. He looks familiar. I can't. That, um, this C O O. Can't place him. Yeah. So this is. It these are Apple executives right? in the front row. Well, anyway, that's uh, sixteen. Jesus. Shooting 16. this. Shooting this with a camcorder. Yeah. Yeah. The front row. The very very front. <laughs> sixteen years is not very long, and uh, it feels like the dark ages. It's old enough to drive now. Yeah, <laughs> the iPod, old enough. It's old to enough drive. to drink illegally. <laughs> old enough for a fake ID. In two years, I can drink in Quebec. This is cruel. This is mean. I don't know who bookmarked this. Did you bookmark this, Karsten? Marco Arment's review <laughs> of the iPod from 2006. This is the his not review, but his his comments on the idea of a widescreen, full screen, touch screen video iPod, which he poo poos completely. Right? Yeah, he got that one perfectly. Well, uh, maybe he's maybe he's being sarcastic. Uh, maybe. He says, at Marco.org, we can make well, better I random mean, predictions than anyone else. Video isn't the next big thing. Portable video. He's joking. Okay. Hardware can't do it well. Touching equals fingerprints. Apple isn't in the business of making half-assed products. They're not going to... Oh, it's mean. Did you bookmark that? That's That's mean. And it was mean of me to bring it up. Marco, yeah. there's plenty of things I said like that, too. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's a, it's a, also one of the coolest things about Apple is that everything that you – when there's a rumor about like uh, Apple's going to do a tablet, everything that you say – and it, if, if you get in the business of, of, of trying to review something before Apple ships it, it's true of all companies but Apple in particular, everything you say will be absolutely true based on the device you think Apple is going to release – but then when Apple release, releases the, the the touchscreen video iPhone and it's actually a phone where a lot of the hardware, the, the point of the touchscreen is to get rid of the, the clicky buttons that are just taking up space on a, on a Palm Trio. Then you realize that, OK, if I if I had known it was if I had heard about this, then I would have agreed with it. Or an iPad where it's no, it's not going to be like a Windows tablet. It's going to be it's not even really going to be like a huge iPhone. It's going to be something kind of different because there's going to be a new interface to go with it. So no, no, no one should be ashamed about. Uh, saying something 15 years in a, ago that didn't turn out to be true because no one's going to be right. I have powered up my iPod, and it works. Well, I don't know. You want to? Yep. Should I play what? Should I play what are what's the on thousand it? songs on Leo Laporte's iPod? Is it playing? It's not playing. Uh oh, it's baby, playing. baby. <laughs> baby, baby. Nope. 16 years later. <laughs> and that's a spinning drive. That's a spinning drive. 16 it's kind years. of amazing. Hey, Rubenstein, do his yep. business. And you, can, and you can actually, there are instructions online for upgrading it to like a comp, uh, the drive to a compact flash. It's. Uh, here we go now. Uh, it sounds good, too. I have to say, it doesn't sound bad at all. That's, a, that's the magical thing about devices that don't have to check in with the internet before yes. it does anything. It's like I bought I bought this like NEC uh, mobile pro 790 <laughs> uh, like at the MIT flea market. Look at that. Uh, that and it's, is and this, awesome. is, this is like years and years and years old. And like you just put a new battery in it and buy like a and because it's a standard like power adapter, you just buy a power adapter for Look it. And that. I'll be damned. I'll, I can run Microsoft Word on this tiny, tiny thing with this beautiful keyboard. That's kind of impressive. <laughs> Even, like years and years later, and because it also uses like a standard like uh, uh, PCMI, <laughs> I could put a compact flash card in there and actually put that in the. See, it's it's like there, there's going to be a, this is the this is like the post apocalyptic like technology Battle we're going to be using. Like All this stuff that doesn't we'll need never to, die. It's the like, cockroaches of technology. <laughs> but does, but do, doesn't it make you doubly annoyed that? I I just want to turn on this light bulb. The I fact know. the fact that it can't connect with the central server means yeah. it's going to make me do that and register yeah. and revalidate yep. before it lets me turn on this light bulb. Yep. All right. Hey, I'm pretty impressed this thing still works. Yeah. It's even in stereo. Hi, <laughs> Stereo. Not mono. Yeah, you, you, you hear that lovely game show host? <laughs> yeah, it's stereo. All right. That's a good song. I forgot about that. <laughs> that's the, that's the one I, I fired up. But my, uh, uh, my my Newton Message Pad 100 still works, and whenever I fire it up, it, it's like frozen in amber. All my contacts, all my notes, all yeah. the ideas I had. Wait a minute, wouldn't I have, like would I have contacts on here? No, maybe not. Okay, this is Klondike five five seven. Yeah, yeah, Klondike. No, no, no. I have. There's extras. Uh, oh wait a minute, I do have contacts. Oh look at this. My contacts are on here as well. All those people that you... They're all tech TV uh, producers and so forth. People I worked with. Finally get back to them. Wow. Apple PR hotline. I haven't called that in a <laughs> while. <laughs> That's fun. Email Guy Kawasaki at The Evangelist. To... <laughs> New York City is going to start using Apple Pay on the subway? What? Thank goodness. Well, these Metro cards uh, are going to be replaced with uh, electronic card readers. Does that mean that I can... Use my Apple Watch to get on the subway. Uh, starting people say it's fantastic in England with the with the Oyster cards. I like the Oyster cards. Oh, a lot. We've got in Boston. We have the Charlie card, which is the same technology. And yeah, the the ability to simply it never fails. You just tap yeah. it and go. Swiping ability, is yeah. so nice. Is it Apple Pay to get the card, or is it, is it just your phone to get in? Well, they say they're going to replace it with NFC contactless NFC, payments. So it yeah, be. yeah. So contactless credit and debit cards that have an embedded NFC chip. Oh, man. Apple Pay, Android Pay, and Samsung Pay will all work with the new system. That is yay. 
So now, right. well, yeah, but I'll still, I'm, I'm still going to, in, in New York City, I'm still going to use like the, car, get, get the tokens. card version of I it. I want tokens. Well, well, no, because it's like, okay, well, here I am at a New York City subway at 1 a.m. I'm just going to take out my $1,000 iPhone out of oh, my yeah. pocket oh, and hold a, it like this. And it's, text your the it's your watch. It's your watch. It's your watch. That's <laughs> It's not as though I'm a milk toast who could <laughs> someone could take it from my hand and run away much faster than I could chase them. <laughs> that's also way to turn styles Apple for Google people to pull out their phone and say, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, we're going to take a break. Get your picks ready, folks. I got I got my pick. I haven't even used it yet. I'm going to open it for my pick. Ooh. Our show today brought to you by Eero. Now, this is a pick. I love our Eero system at home. Enterprise-grade Wi-Fi. Upgrading your home, no matter how big, no how, no matter how poor your Wi-Fi has been, you, Eero is going to turn it around. You download the Eero app on your iOS or Android device, walk through the setup process. It's quick and easy, and these new Eros are amazing. This Eero started in t early 2016, and one of the things Eero has done is they get they they have learned from the hundreds of thousands of users, so they get smarter all the time faster more reliable they learn what devices need what kind of speed what frequencies and so this new second generation Eero and I've I've installed it, is so fantastic you got a new base station that is tri-band and you know it's about twice as fast and the Eero beacon will allow a customer to build a Wi-Fi system that's more perfectly tailored to your home than ever before you just plug it into an outlet it also is a nightlight so I put it in the halls and it's great more speed, more range, still the same high quality, elegant design. And with the uh, third 5 gigahertz radio, the second generation Eero is tri-band and twice as fast as its predecessor. Now, I know one thing people are thinking about when, you, when I talk Wi-Fi is crack, the crack Wi-Fi vulnerability. And this is why you want Eero. Within 24 hours of the reveal of the Wi-Fi vulnerability, Eero automatically pushed out a fix to all their customers within one day. so you And you didn't have to do anything, unlike other Wi-Fi systems where you have to see if there's new firmware and download it and update. It happened instantly. Their incredibly fast response time sets Eero apart from everybody else. Now, we I should mention, crack doesn't affect base stations, but because Eero has these, you know, these extra, the beacons, they connect to the base stations. So any mesh system that connects back to a base station is vulnerable to crack. That's why Eero pushed a fix so fast. Bravo, Eero. E-E-R-O dot com. By the way, they also have a new thread radio in there, which means they can connect to low-power devices for IoT, like locks and doorbells and sensors. And you can add as many Eero beacons as you need. It's about 1,500 square foot per Eero unit. So we have a 4,000 square foot house. Three of them is all we need. But as you get bigger or more complex or you have an upstairs downstairs it's easy to extend it free overnight shipping to the u.s and canada when you use our offer code mac break just go to eero eero.com pick the system you want i would just start with the base you know base station plus two beacons that's enough for almost every home and then check out at checkout select overnight shipping and use the uh, they'll, then they'll the promo code mac break and that'll remove the cost of overnight shipping eero eero.com i i am so thrilled that we are partnered with Eero. I use Eero at home, and the knowledge that they patched that instantly within 24 hours just makes me feel really good. Eero.com. Don't forget the MacBreak offer code to get free overnight shipping. That's why you want an Eero, folks. Alex, we, we see you so rarely. I think I'm going to let you uh, start off with your pick of the week because it's always something I want to spend money on, and I don't want to spend all my money before I get to you. So I do a lot of diagrams. <laughs> I have to make lots and lots of diagrams, wiring diagrams, flow diagrams. I've spent the last couple of days in the middle of it. And I, uh, I, I just downloaded the new um, OmniGraphle and it's just great. So I'm, I'm, I'm recommending it. OmniGraphle 7 uh, or 7.5. We now, love, we love these guys at the yeah, Omni group. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. really well done. And, um, you know, it, it, the 7 is a big jump from the last version I was using. I just wasn't paying much attention until it was crashing in High Sierra. <laughs> so, so then I, uh, I got <laughs> This seven. is High Sierra compatible though. It's easy one. to order. I yeah. ordered, yeah, this one, this one's High Sierra compatible. I, uh, I, it was great. I went to the app store, downloaded it, upgraded it, you know, and it even has the upgrade built into it. So I was able to upgrade it really easily in the app store. 
Um, and you, you know the you'll whole. You'll probably canvas, get Pro, right? Uh, I have Pro, yeah. That's one ninety nine, yeah, so. and then standard is a hundred. Yeah, and if you already have one, and the upgrades are low. Then the new tools, and I don't know when they added these, but they're new for me. Is being able to really go in and, and edit all of the you know the EPS files and be able to select a lot of the, those bits and pieces that you couldn't do before. It used to be just kind of dropping images in, um, and it's just a really uh, it's a really smooth way to do this. Um, and if you're building any kind of Again, for me, it's mostly signal flow, so it's thousands of lines that are all, you know, uh, saying where all the all the stuff's going to go. Um, the uh, it's just it's so much easier. We've, I've tried a lot of other things. We tried to find a cross-platform one because a lot of other folks in the company, you know, have PCs and and they and but I just couldn't I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was like, you know, I just couldn't find one that was as smooth as easy, and I was like, my time is valuable to me. Um, you get used to this and it's really hard to go back also to like just using like Keynote to do these because when you connect all those little boxes, all of that is magnet, you know, there's little magnets there. And so you can move, just you can keep on playing it, around with it, your, yeah. your graph and you're that. not like moving all your, all your arrows again and, and putting them all together. And it's just, uh, anyway, it's, it's a great, it's a great app that I spend unfortunately a lot. I mean, not, not, not unfortunately, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, but isn't it nice? Cause you get these things like Photoshop and, and stuff like that, but no, I spent a lot oh, of time yeah. in this, but yeah. the, 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 the diagrams, I wish I could show you them, but they're all NDA, but they're, but the, um, <laughs> Uh, but what those are, you are great. Building nuclear power plants? What are you? Well, not <laughs> nuclear not power nor deny. <laughs> no, no, it's just they're all for jobs. You know, and you for, use the Mac version, not the iOS. Have you have you tried the iOS? I've had trouble. I haven't used uh, the iOS version recently. Um, I, I had a lot of trouble with what I needed to do to do it. it it's pretty precise. Um, and I so you just have to connect, you know, It'd lots be better of things to do it on each the other. Desktop, yeah. I found it easier to yeah. do on the desktop. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think the iOS version, I, I'll, I'll probably download it again and try it again. But I... Um, wasn't able to. I wasn't as successful with their first couple versions, and so yeah. I stuck with yeah. the pro, with the um, desktop version. Nice. Um, I haven't asked you if you uh, upgraded to the new Lightroom. I have it. I downloaded it. Oh, so I'm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so I haven't. Uh, I haven't made the. Move I have mixed yet. feelings. I'm not a dead. A, I mean, it's it's like a different program, but uh, and I I have I have the classic, so I'm gonna yep. keep that lying around. But I'm not convinced it's, it, it, you know, as I slowly discover, you know, for a while I couldn't, I said, where's the histogram? But there is a, it's hidden and there's a way to make that come mm -hmm. back and, and it might be all right. I think, I think in a lot of ways they're revving the code base. I mean, they, they, they need to. to do you have Oh, to they do had that, to yeah. do it. From a performance perspective, it's just oh, absolutely. and the performance is much better now. Right. Yeah. Even on classic, it's better. Yeah. So, but I have a feeling this is an opportunity, uh, well, uh, for companies like MacFun. I know they're doing a digital asset I was going to say. Plug-in, yep. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, is Affinity I was, Photo, Serif. Right. It seemed as though Adobe was ta was looking at what was happening with uh, a lot of these MacFun apps and saying, Meh, that's an interesting way to do the interface. Maybe we should think about doing that. Yeah. It's time. And I, I got to say, I don't, I don't like, I don't like it when I get an email from a company that makes a product, a piece of software that I rely on and says, good news, we're revolutionarily changing this thing yeah, you rely on. Scary. On the other hand, the, but the only thing that's scarier than that is, don't worry, we haven't changed a thing for three or four years. Nothing, <laughs> nothing has changed. We've well, we've do bug fixes, but once every eighteen months. But no, we're not doing anything with this app whatsoever. Yeah. So that's well, like, I, and I think that I think that the, the once one thing that, once Chuck retires, you know that this product is history. <laughs> you know, I think that one of the things that they did right that I think Apple didn't do right was the um, Apple when they re released Final Cut Ten, they took Seven away, which is what made everybody so upset. In this in this way, they said, "Well, we're going. This is the future. You guys can look at it, but we're not taking away the thing you're using every day just yet. You know, we're going to let you de you know decide when you're going to go over." So, um, I'm going to be, uh, you know, this. I've been waiting for this moment. You can buy Luminar, which is Mac Fun's kind of Lightroom right uh, equivalent for a lot less money. It's a standalone. You know, you put it on there and and you you don't subscribe. $69. And if they add digital asset management at a reasonable yeah. price, which I'm sure they will, this, you know, it's not that I don't like the new, like I'm not, I'm not completely rejecting the new Lightroom, but it's just at this point, you, this is, this is the inflection point where you might want to make the change, right? Well, that's, Serif, that's, uh, which does uh, affinity photos. It's a great doing the native experience. Yeah. Can I, can I, can I also say that this is a risk that any company takes when they 
do something this revolutionary because I think any any consumer once you've been told that we're making this we're making such a huge change to this piece of hardware or to this piece of software that you're going to have to relearn you're going to have to learn a lot of new stuff that's a really great time for anyone to say well if I'm going to learn a lot of new stuff anyway let me take a t let me take a step back look at all the alternatives exactly. because Maybe I should be learning new skills with a different app that I haven't been aware of over the past three or four years. It's going to do a much better job for me. On the so. other hand, the integration with the iPad, with Lightroom on the iPad. Yeah, that's that's what's that's what's getting me. That kind of sells it's, 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 a little bit, right? See, I, I don't I don't use the the existing the previous Lightroom integrates with uh, uh, Lightroom Mobile very well, but I haven't really been using it because it feels like two separate experiences. I'm never really I don't I'm not convinced I need it, and I'm not really confident about how well it works together. This one. Part of the effect of how they're redesigning this is to say, no, 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 it's all one app. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's all gonna be one experience. And if you have an iPad Pro, you may as well be, you may as well be remain on your sofa and do your edits yep. with the Apple Pencil, then get up and going to the office because we're not, we're, we're disc, we're destroying the idea that. This is a lesser version of the of the desktop experience. Yeah. So I'll give them, I'll I'll give them some I'll give them some some trust here. Did you download the update to Photoshop, Leo? Uh. Well, not yet. Why is that a big? So it has to... support for H E for for Heath. Oh, it does have support for Heath. Oh, good. And for depth map. So and you can even edit the depth map as an as a channel. So you can go in and touch it up if you're not happy with it or change it, and then you still preserve all that depth data. Interesting. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Andy. I mean, I'm looking at this is the uh, iPad version of this now, uh, which is exactly the same interfaces on the desktop, and so you know, and you've got all the sliders, and it's. And it's uh, round trippable, so any changes I yeah. make here go to the desktop and vice versa. And even though uh, iPads don't handle RAW, somehow they're doing some sort of magic. They should be able to. No, they do. Yeah, they, they, do? they, handle, oh, okay. they do RAW. Is this so? This is the RAW version of the file. I wonder. Yeah, it might yeah. be giving you a fact, preview yeah. that's not it's, RAW. It's smart yeah. previews, it, JPEG. Yeah, the, the iPhone version shoots RAW. As a matter of fact. Yeah, but there was no. So the so what but Lightroom but really Ra, Ra, is is Adobe Camera system. RAW with a wrapper yeah. around it written in Lua to give it a database and some features. But it was ACR that really is what Lightroom is all about. It doesn't use Apple Camera Raw. It uses Adobe. No, I don't but know it what should give you the raw here. photo and then give you a JPEG preview and apply the Delta changes retroactively like back and forth between your files, I think. Well, it can't use Adobe Camera Raw on the iPad. So, no. Uh, so it's it probably rendering, keeps that on the server. My suspicion is, what, yeah, exactly. What's happening is yeah. it's rendering a JPEG uh, on the server on the desktop and then you're getting a jpeg which you're modifying and it's saving edits as a separate edl kind of file right. which it then applies to the the raw when you get back when you round trip yeah. back yep. something like that so but that's not a bad it means you can do a lot of the work you're right yep. sitting down using your apple and it's probably much faster oh much on mobile yeah much i mean i went out and bought a program just because i could, it couldn't handle raws fast enough on the on the pc or the mac so it's uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll watch and see. <laughs> it's definitely a, a a new world we live in. Um, Aunt Pruitt is in our chat room, and I'll have to ask him what he uh, thinks he's been uh, playing with it. He was at Adobe Max, and he says, yeah, a lot faster. Andy Anako, your pick of the week. Uh, my pick of the week is a really cool image uh, processing filter, whatever piece of software called Primitive. Uh, it is. It is also a really great song by the Cramps. So if you want to look at that, that's also <laughs> that's also one of my favorite songs. But what it is is it will take your photo and it will use it'll algorithmically try to recreate it using just graphic primitives, just graphic shapes, and the effects are really Ooh, really interesting. Look at here's a picture of uh, somebody we know. There you go. So that's what I was playing with it like over and over again. As soon as, as soon as I found out about it, I was up for another like two hours playing with it. And you can choose. It, it's great because it gives you all kinds of control over how it will process the image. So you can you can choose like just just use ovals and just make, build this out of stop after you've drawn a hundred ovals. And it's not and it's doing it intelligently. It's not just using here is an area of gray. I will sort of pixelate it and then sort of approximate it. it is if you choose ovals, it will look for things that are uh, areas that are are kind of oval-ish, like the brim of my hat. It will try to fill that with an oval. Uh, and so, if you have like a, a uh, if you have a, a picket fence, it will do not quite as good a job with that. But if you had chosen, give me rectangles, or give me just polygons, uh, or give me bezier, you know, just regular freeform curves. Uh, and so, each one will give you a different sort of uh, uh, sort of effect. And you can also tell it, no, just uh, stop when it's. You can tell it, uh, it's all along. It's giving you when it's 
processing this, it will tell you, oh, well, we think we've got 50%. We're, we're 50% close to what the original photo is. Now it's 75%. Oh, that's so you can say, wow. you can just say, keep it running until you're at 90% of what the original photo looks like. The other cool thing you can do is you can stop it in mid, in sort of in mid render. And then switch graphics primitives. So, for instance, in the demo picture that uh, uh, that, I, that I posted, it's uh, I had it start off with ovals to basically block in the areas of color, and then switch to thick lines to get some of the details, and then finally switch to really thin lines to get sort of more of a cross hatching sort of thing where that where that works. So you wind up with this composite picture that no one will be able to figure out exactly what you did with it, but it looks like an interesting piece of vector artwork uh, and it can export it as jpeg png it can also export it as an sfg file so that all of the graphic primitives all the curves are it's just being uh saved as an object oriented file even though even if there are 1500 objects with it so then you can import it into illustrator you can import it into photoshop so if you wanted to if you wanted to do a billboard <laughs> Like on the side of a side of a building that was 10 feet by 40 feet, you could basically take this picture and turn it to something that will scale to international, visible from the International Space Station size, and it will be a really credible, really nice piece of art. I, I love that it's it's 10 bucks, so it's not free, but definitely worth 10 bucks because there's so many times when you're in a position where, uh, like, uh, like imagine that you're doing a presentation and a lot of your stuff are pictures that you're just using to sort of not to. Here's here's a map of the of the target. It's more like oh well, here's something to look at while I'm explaining this point of view. You want it to, it to be something a little bit more interesting than a picture. This will then take that photo and turn it to something more interesting than a photo. Or and right now, a lot of people I'm sure are thinking about uh, uh, their uh, their holiday pick their their holiday uh, photo cards that they're, they're putting out. You can take a picture of something that is rather straightforward, and rather than it being oh here's a picture I took with my iPhone of Central Park. You can spend about 10 or 15 minutes with this, and it really looks like a piece of art that was custom made for this. And, and as you're seeing right now in the in the video, it's actually really interesting to see this picture. It's sort of like you're developing a photo, and you're shaking like the, the yeah. tray of developer, and you're seeing it become from just a series of blobs to something that is sort of intermediate to something that now they've got the eyelashes in. Now they've got like the curve of the lip in. Uh, and actually, the, the secret to getting really cool images from this is knowing when to stop because at some point it gets so much detail that it kind of looks like a blurry image but at some point it's just ovals and curves and triangles and just a really fascinating thing you'll be you'll be you'll be playing what i call the the new chainsaw uh, effect with it which is you buy the chainsaw you cut up the log that fell during the storm and then you spend the rest of the day thinking i wonder what else i can cut with this chainsaw <laughs> Uh, Alex Lindsay's already purchased it and is running it, and is running it <laughs> yeah. on a, an Angry Bird. That's good. I, I took like a picture that. of an Angry Bird in Berlin. I guess there's a big Lego store there, and there was a giant Angry Bird. So and he's watching he's it rendering. evolve over it's time. Great. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> really nice pick for ten bucks. That's great. That is yeah. Not it's not Prism because it's it's Prism like in some of its results, but it's but it's a little more complicated and sophisticated. It's primitive. If you you can you can look at you can look at the code on GitHub. It's it's oh, really? your, it's, it's, your it's your basic. Oh, the the I think the core of it. I, I I found it after looking for something similar on GitHub and found well, if you you can either compile this and use this code to build it yourself, or you can we made this into an actual ah, app with an interface. I said it. I want the app with the interface. Thank yeah. you. I don't want to have to build something. Interesting. I'm not. My brain is not that good. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So I have two picks. I hastily added one. We started talking about Netflix original programming because so much of it is so good. And this weekend, I've, I've been meaning to do this forever, but this weekend I finally broke down and binge watched Voltron. It's the new Voltron that Netflix has produced. And it is it is terrific. Whenever a season ends, I just want the next season to begin immediately. Uh, it's just really well written, really well uh, you know directed. Uh, the characters are great. It's got some classic anime cheesiness but it's got a very sophisticated storyline and it's got all so the this elements is new it, yes wow a new version of an old favorite wow it very much has that you know old school feel to it that's very yeah, cool it's, it's classic but it's modern they did a really good job balancing the two and they like they have all the old characters but you meet them in new and very interesting and very modern ways wow. uh, and i was really really impressed by it so if you're and each episode is only like 22 minutes long yes but there's, there's never four that many. seasons so Prepare but they're short like one binge. season is like six episodes oh, i think okay okay so Voltron. so good dreamworks um, really did it good. 
Very interesting. Yeah, and it's I think I forget the team, but it's a really talented team behind it, and they do you know people really love the storylines that they put together. Netflix original. All right. So if you're looking for something to binge, my second pick is something that uh, I was uh, Strategy Caldwell picked one of these up, and I liked it so much I ran to the store and picked one up too, and it's the Mofi Power Station USB C XXL. <laughs> that probably means what twenty or fifty in iPhone parlance. Uh, universal <laughs> battery. Uh, and what it's it's brilliant. It's like the Mophie station. I've been using a Mophie power station for a long time, but it had two USB A ports on it, and it was really designed for a phone or a tablet. This one has a USB C and a USB A on it, so you can plug in your normal USB to Lightning port if you want to, or to micro USB or whatever to charge your iPhone or your iPad or your 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 AirPods, your earphones, whatever you want. But the USB C you can use to charge a MacBook Pro. And that's really great because that's one of the advantages of having USB-C on the MacBook Pro and on the MacBook is that you can carry around these portable batteries and use them. So I've had this in my bag for the last week, and I've been using it probably just as much on my MacBook Pro as I have on my on my iPad uh, because there's nothing worse than you being in, like, in the coffee shop and not having a plug with you and realizing you have to leave and go home, you know, not finish your work. And now I just I have one charger that that, that does all the devices I have all the way from the AirPods up to the MacBook Pro. I just plug it in and I go and it has plenty of power and it keeps, it's really smart about how it maintains its charge. And I've been really happy with it. It's pricey, it's like 150 bucks. I don't know if that's the Canadian price or the US price. I think that's the US price. I think it's price. the same, yeah. 150 bucks Yeah, here, and yeah. It, so it is 150 <laughs> bucks, but it is so much mobile power. 10,000, I'm sorry, 19,500 milliamp hours yeah. at up to 30 uh, yeah. watts. And Mophie may, some people I like, like it. always it's look for fabric cheap color battery. Covered. I like that. Yeah, but one thing you don't want with a battery is necessarily cheap. You want a battery that's yeah. good. If it is inexpensive, that's fine too. But there's so many things that can go wrong with lithium ion that I, I try to buy something that's oh, right yeah, priced. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mophie's safe. Right, but, Mophie's safe. Yeah. 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 The Mophie I, 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 I underscore that. Having, having a, like a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, this is like having the sword of justice and the shield of invulnerability in your bag because it's like for an entire, especially if you travel with like an iPad instead of a regular notebook, it means that it almost doesn't matter if I can't find a uh, find a power outlet for 48 hours because this is this can recharge everything. And if you have a, and if you have like a, a MacBook nothing or a a modern MacBook which which charges off of USB, the ability that for an entire I can be just a jerk with this bat with my with my mobile usage for 18 hours because I have eight or nine hours internal and I've got at least another eight or nine hours in this battery. So I don't. It's the ability to not even have to care about how you're spending your battery life is quite liberating. Should point out though that for 40 bucks you can get an anchor 20,000 milliamp hour battery, but doesn't have Type C. That's the that's the yeah, one anchor that makes I have. Great products too. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the thing I don't I don't know how fast the uh, the Mophie one charges. The nice thing about the anchor, I, I think I have the exact one or maybe the next one up from what you're showing on on Amazon. There, uh, it actually has two micro USB charging ports, so you can actually plug it into two chargers simultaneously, oh. and it will it will go from zero to hundred percent in about half in half the time. Oh, that's uh, good. And and with a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, it really can take overnight to charge. Yeah. Uh, which is why I actually uh, I. When I travel on a really intensive schedule, I will actually have both my new one and the old one that it replaced at the same time because the the old one will be charging at the back of the hotel while I'm using the new one. And I'll be swapping them day after day to make sure I always have my 20,000 milliamp hour battery. That's This is uh, the PowerCore 26800 that you have. It has two. I wish it weren't right. micro USB, though. That's, yeah, I don't I'm have not, many well, of those left anymore. I don't. Well, I mean, I, I will always have a micro USB to USB A so. yeah. cable, so I'm not that sh that shamed about it. But yeah, there's there's hopefully in the next two years we will we will just have C. we will yeah. just have Type C cables, yeah. and it's all we'll ever need. Yeah, I love it that you can dual input though. That's really kind of cool. Yeah, that that's really thinking. My pick just came, so I don't have any review, <laughs> but I thought I'd show it to you because we've been talking about it. The new Sonos is here. The Sonos hey. Play One with built-in Amazon. Echo capabilities. So uh, I really have to say the Echo integration on Sonos works great. And I use it all the time now. I'll say things like Echo, listen to ACDC in the bedroom, Sonos. I named, I had, a, I didn't have to, but I decided to rename all my Sonoses with the word Sonos in the name so it would be explicit because otherwise it would just be bedroom and that was getting confusing. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the new Sonos One, which has it built in. And Again, the idea is you could uh, you could uh, Amazon Echify 
right. your whole ecosystem using this as well. And I I'm kind of amazed. I think we talked about this before. My kids are just like completely tied in, like constantly they can talk talking, to it. Yeah. constantly asking questions. Yeah. Constantly, anything they're trying to figure out, they just ask. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I just mentioned that I got it. I mean, I could take it out, but it looks just like a Play One. Um, and I can't open the tape. But uh, <laughs> here comes the knife. But uh, the, more to the point, we'll have a review uh, of this uh, probably by next week on uh, the new screensavers. I might have, I, you know what, I'll probably do it Saturday. I'll have time between now and Saturday to, to give it a thorough trial. The Sonos, this is the new Sonos One, which is like the Play One. Right. It's a, it's a simple, it's, is it single speaker or dual speaker? It's tiny solution. You know, if, if you're, th it doesn't do all the things the Echo does, which is part of the, I wish it did everything the Echo did. Because then this would be, this is going to be a competition, though, for the HomePod and for the Google Max. And, you know, I mean, everybody's doing these. Yeah, it has a couple of speakers, a big one and a little one. I can see them through the grill. Well, we'll try it. We'll let you know. And uh, it's out anyway. It's shipping to people who uh, pre-ordered it. That's it for Mac Break Weekly. What a fun show. Thank you for playing trivia with me, even though I lost. <laughs> Andy and I, because it's the Chicago Sun Times, he knows the difference between alliterative verse and iambic pentameter. He's a writer, gosh darn it. Find his work I, at uh, the Times and, of course, CWOB.com. That's where he makes his home on the web. And follow him on the Twitter, I H N A T K O, Andy I on, in, on uh, the uh, Flickr. And, Flickr. And it's uh, Inako on Instagram. And his pictures are great. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Renee Ritchie. iMore.com. you got to follow iMore. The new yellow iMore is better than ever. <laughs> a fabulous, fabulous place to go for information, not just about Apple, but really all your devices now. It's fantastic. Did you change your lighting, Renee? You changed I, his I had to move. Yeah, I had to move where the setup was. He's now, the lighting see, looks much better. Yeah, I okay, kind of like it's it. A, it's a little softer. more open. Yeah, It's softer, not as hard. Awesome. I also I also like the 3D effect of having something that goes into perspective as opposed to having a flat background that's uh, that's perpendicular that's uh, parallel to the plane of the camera. And that's your actually facial cool. hair is looking particularly on point, or as the as the kids say, on fleek. <laughs> Do they still say that? I think they learned it, <laughs> and now they don't say it anymore. Uh, that's a, that's a problem <laughs> trying to keep up with the kids. You're on fleek shui. Thank you so much to to Alex Lindsay of the Pixel Core. It's always great when you can be here. We yeah, appreciate it. You're such a font of wisdom. Uh, Alex is at uh, the Twitter, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-A-L-E-X. It's the first name, Alex Lindsay. And, of course, at pixelcore.com. But follow them. Our, your membership is now reopened. It's it, it, soon. It, it, soon. It's soon. Any soon. day now. Yeah, any day now. I'm working on it. <laughs> it the problem is we, we look at, like, oh, it's going to slow down in production, so we're going to be able to start training right. people. And then it gets, like, crazy. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we're going to wait just a little Perils of success, close. my yeah, friends. We're close. Uh, but uh, follow him on uh, on the Twitter because that way you'll know what he's up to at all times. Thanks for being here. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday right after iOS Today. That's that's kind of new. We've moved iOS Today to Tuesday so we can have a massive Apple block. Uh, usually start around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. In two weeks, it'll be 1900 UTC because our summertime is about to end here in the United States, uh, November 5th. So on November 5th, just remember... The following uh, two weeks from now, Mac Break Weekly will be an hour later than we usually are. Uh, if you can be here live, we love it. Join us in the chat room, irc.twit.tv. Watch at twit.tv slash live. If you want tickets to watch the show, we'd love to have you in studio with us. Tickets at twit.tv. But if you can't do any of those things on demand audio and video, of course, is available at twit.tv slash mbw and uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe. Subscribe. That way you get it every single week. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Now back to work, kids, because break time is over.